now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex. It's the Ramble from the least infected city in the United States, and we're here until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen from lovely downtown Boulder, Nevada. Boulder City, Nevada. There you go. Well, I fucked that one up. From lovely downtown Boulder City, Nevada, it's the music of Steve Kravitz and his orchestra. <laughs> and S- Steve strikes up the band with this little number. Go ahead. Crowd goes wild. <laughs> How you doing, Steve? I'm doing well. Have you been outside since the last time we talked? Uh, I was out yesterday. I took an hour walk. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. Mask, gloves, hat, everything? Mask, gloves, hat, yeah. I have uh, here my mask, my old mask here. There we go. Very nice. Here, just so I don't get anything from you, okay? Yeah. Because Nevada's got a problem now, right? Yeah, but it's still not in the top five. It's not. No, it's not in the top five. You know what? what is really wonderful? is that New York State, and New York City in particular, were the most, this was the most infected city in America at one time. Now it is the least infected city in America. Sunday, the mayor said there were only, there were zero deaths in New York City. Is that right? Yeah. That's because everybody's following protocol. There were 10 in the rest of the state because we had an outbreak upstate that was caused by somebody going to a wedding from another state. And it really? caused a cluster of, uh, of situations, but not deaths, but situations. Can I tell you, I'm, I'm moving back to Massachusetts. Y- yes, you told me that. I have to be quarantined for two weeks. Yeah, but that's, that's as it should be. Right. You know, I mean, we know you probably haven't been out. And you've been taking care of yourself, and you haven't been you know, commingling with anybody. But nevertheless, you know, they don't know that. Right. You know, so right. It, there's not, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know. No. You only you've you've gotten used to staying indoors anyway. Yes, I have. And it's not like you're traveling there for a vacation. And that if no. you spend two weeks quarantine, that's pretty much your vacation. Right, you know. right. So I'm moving back to Worcester, Massachusetts. Yeah, or which is spelled Worcester. Yeah, well, yeah. it's actually pronounced Worcester. Worcester. Right, Worcester. Yeah. Like in, in Worcester, it's not Donna Summer, it's Donna Summer. Uh, I see, okay. That now, uh, uh, you're the you're the second person I know from Wooster. Who's the other one? Abby Hoffman. Oh, that's right. It's from Wooster, Massachusetts. And, sure is. And wasn't there wasn't there like some big Civil War thing or Revolutionary War thing that happened in Wooster? Not that I know. Not that you know of. Okay, I just thought there was some kind of, you know. I didn't do well in U.S. history. Right. Right. So anyway, you're going back, and uh, you still have family back there. Yes. What? And I have friends I went to high school with. Oh, okay. What are you going back for, the relatives or the friends? Both. Oh, okay. Because you're, you're talking to the relatives, okay? Yes. Oh, okay. And I'm talking to the friends. Yeah, because usually, you know, when, it, when, you, when I talk to people about their family, they say, I got a sister, but I haven't talked to her in 20 years. You know. Well, I haven't talked to my dad in 40 years. Really? Yeah. Is he back there? He's in Virginia. He's in Virginia, so you don't have to put up with him in Wooster. No. Oh, okay. He hasn't talked to my brothers either. Really? What's wrong with your dad? He's an asshole. I guess I, I, guess I would agree with you. I, would, I wouldn't have said that because he's your father, 
But now that you said that, you can agree. I can agree. Yeah, he's an asshole. Well, I mean, how yeah. do you? You know, I mean, I haven't had any kids, and neither of you, by the way. No. Right. No. Uh, none that I, you know, can send a card to. All right. Right. None that I know of. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you, you, you know, you don't have any uh, any children. But if I had children, I can't imagine not having anything to do with them. Right. I mean, I can imagine them being real assholes and not having anything to do with me. Right. In, in which they would probably be correct in doing that. But, uh, you know, I mean, the fact is that I can't imagine that I wouldn't try to have a relationship with my kids. No, the problem was my mom passed away. And my dad got remarried, and he moved her into our home. And what he should have done is sold the house and bought a new home that was fresh for both of them and the whole family. It's just strange from everybody in the family. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I would do in that kind of situation if I had a wife who died and then I remarried. Would I move them into the same house? I don't think they would want to move into the same house. Right, right. That was my mom's house. Well, why was it your mom's house? Because, you know, she was, uh, until we all went to uh, school, she was a live-in mom, a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was all over that house. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I would, I would just think that the newly married wife wouldn't want to move in there. Right, you know? right, you would think. Yeah. But my dad is, my dad and his new wife have more money than God. And they're cheaper than you can imagine. Well, wait a minute. You say, and his new wife. Now, how old, how long has he been married to her? Longer than he was married to my mom. Oh, okay. So it's not really his new wife. It's his second wife. Right, right, right. Yeah. And they have a daughter that he has kept away from us all these years. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. She's out on her own now. They bought her a house for graduation. They bought her a house. You know what I got from graduation? I left for California. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. How'd you get to California? Why'd you go to California? Well, I came back from France. Mm -hmm. You were, by the way, by the way, by the way, you were a mime in France. Uh, there's a lot of different mimes is not, it's actually memes. Yeah. In French. And there's different kind of memes. There's mass mimes, there's corporeal mimes, there's pantomime. And what you're thinking of is pantomime. Yeah. And I studied the other two. But when I formed on the weekends at the Pompidou Center, I would do pantomime. Yeah. So you do, would you put the white face on and, uh, oh, yeah. and pretend oh, like yeah. you were trying to get out of a box? Every day. Can you do that around. thing? Could you just do that thing for us of trying to get out of the box? Yeah. <laughs> That's a My one, skills are sharp. That's the one thing I hated most about mimes was that bit, you know? And they all do it. They all do it, yeah. But you're playing for the Taurus. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not doing it because you love it. You're doing it to, you know, so you can eat that day. Well, you know, I interviewed Marcel Marceau. Did you really? He had nothing to say. No, really. He, no, he was very talkative. We, uh, I still have the interview. I played it occasionally on, on this little network. Uh, really? Yeah, he. Uh, I liked him a lot. Yeah. Uh, I met him when I was at University of Massachusetts. He it must. It, was it a thrill for you? Because I mean, come on, he was really good at that. Oh yeah, it was a big thrill. Yeah. That's how I ended up going to Paris. Yeah. Do you remember that the movie Silent Movie that Mel Brooks made? Right, and uh, Marceau had the only line in it. He uh, said no. No. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> The only speaking line in the whole picture was done by Marcel Marceau in the complete mime costume of Bip, which was his, oh, yeah. which was his lovable character. Um, he was really good at it. He was good at it, and everybody else emulated him. You know, and well, that's uh, yeah. His teacher was Etienne de Cru. Huh? Etienne de Cru hated pantomime. Who hated pantomime? Etienne de Crew. Who's Etienne de Crew? He is the master of corporeal mime. 
Now, what's corporeal mime? It's based on triple designs, Rodin sculptures, and isolation of different parts of your body. And, you, and your face is covered. Yeah. Covered with, like, you know, uh, like a hood. Completely your face is So gone. you're not using your face as part of the mime. That's right. Maybe you're using your head, but you're not using your face. That's right. And so what do you do with the rest of your body? Try to get out of the box? No, there's no box. There's no box. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, that was a long, long time ago, my friend. Okay, so if you did corporeal mime, let's say you were to do corpor corporeal mime, I'm not going to ask you to do it because you don't have a hood on. Right. Uh, what kind of things do you do? What kind of... Well, it's like, look, it's a rotation, it's an inclination, and then, and then a turn. Uh -huh. So you can do your head, you do your, your, your torso, you do your, your stomach area, and then you do your legs. Is that kind of like the robot thing that people do? No, not really. Why I did it is I wanted to learn, you know, because as it, doing stand-up, you, your body is your tool, mm -hmm. as well as your words. So I wanted to have that capacity over my body when I perform. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So when I started doing stand-up, I had no idea what stand-up was, but I had stage presence. You know, I knew the stage. Right. So that's how I got started, you know, in, at the Holy City Zoo. Okay. All right. All right. And so you felt that you then were able to use your Paris training right. in your comedy. Right. And I went to two schools in Paris at the same time. Yeah. And they were diaposed to each other, so... If one school found out I was going to the other school, I would have been kicked out of both schools so I could have no friends. I couldn't talk to anybody. Well, you didn't know how to speak French anyway. So, you know, no, what I, the hell? I, I never learned. <laughs> Two years I was there, I never learned. I learned basically, give me that and how much is it? Right. But when I first got there, if I couldn't point to it, I couldn't have it. Well, I found when in foreign languages, when I've been like in Spain and France and so on, I, when I want something, I would go in and I would look at the donuts, for instance, or the right. croissants, and I would, go, go. I would go, right. you know, I mean, that's all you had to do. I mean, really, your studying as a mime probably came in handy. Oh, sure. Sure. Because yeah. I could do little mime things to get where I was going, you know? Yeah. Show me where the market yeah. is. You know, I could push like a car or something yeah. and pick things out. Or if you're traveling around, you got a map with you. You go up to somebody, you point on the map, and they go right, I, right there. You know. And I'm sure I got ripped off because when I first got there, they would tell me how much it was, and I would just hand them all my money and say, you know, yeah, here, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you didn't know what the what the money was anyway. No, no. Right. And there, it's different sized bills too. Yeah. Well, that's what I you did know. like about about European money, is the different size bills. That makes uh, sense. In different colors. Yeah, but that makes sense. You know. Yeah, uh, sure. I, 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 you know, I uh, because uh, then you don't in different colors, and so when you pull out the money, you immediately know what you've got. Right. You know, Same now, and people go, well, geez, you know, and the people come to the United States and they go, this is ridiculous. All the bills look alike. Right. You know, and right. yet our coins are all different sizes. Yet I yeah, can never understand why the penny was bigger than the dime and the dime was smaller than the nickel. And, right. you know, it, it should have gone. Penny should have been the size of a dime. Right. Nickel, nickel should have been the size of it should be the size of a penny, right? Right. right. And then a dime should be the size of uh, of, a, of a nickel. That's right. And then everything else gets bigger. Then the quarter gets bigger, and the half dollar gets bigger, and the silver dollar gets bigger. Right. The silver dollar, but the other dollars we've put out haven't been successful. Are you, do you still get silver dollars in change in Nevada? No. Because when I lived in Nevada, you got silver dollars all the time, and I would have a pocket full of silver dollars. And my pants were ripping. The pockets were ripping because the the, the weight of the of the silver dollars, you know. So, uh, what the hell? Hey, listen, I'm looking at the clock, and it's starting to run out of time. 
Uh, so right. t- tell us, where are you playing? At home. How are you Come keep? How are you keeping your comedy going? Do you stand in front of that mirror in back of you and uh, and and do shtick and do bits and? No. Nah. I need an audience. Yeah, I asked. Uh, I asked Bubs what he was doing to keep his, you know, his chops up. He says occasionally he might go in front of a mirror and do some stuff, you know. Really? He, yeah. Well, I mean, there's no place. He said he did a comedy show and. Uh, it was a, a safe comedy show, and nobody was very good because they were all out of practice. Right. You know, the, right. your timing goes to shit when you're not working. Hey, right. listen. And, go ahead. We've run out of time. Already. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, I'd like to say where you're playing, but you're not. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. sixth year this is gabnet the great american broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before ah yes it's so nice hey thank you to steve kravitz for having joined us uh this evening uh on our little uh our little show whatever it is um we're ready to open up our zoom lines if you don't know how to get uh, uh on zoom uh, here, just go to gabnet.net down on the right hand side towards the bottom. There's a thing that says click here to join our Zoom panel. Uh, you can click on that or you can click on it on my Facebook page or uh, just right below here if you're looking on, um, on uh, um, YouTube. Uh, it'll say during the program you can Zoom us at and then you just click on that. You don't have to have Zoom installed in your machine at all. That's not important. Uh, what is important is that you call us. And we always like new people, and we always go very easy on new people. Uh, so if you call us, we'll be happy to talk to you. All right? Uh, and you just click on that, and it's that simple. I mean, it should be that simple. Uh, some people have a problem occasionally. Uh, but uh, th- then again, some people, uh, it-, it wouldn't be uh, the worst idea if you, uh, if you did something about putting uh, uh, Zoom on your machine. It doesn't cost you anything. And it would just make it easier all the way around. But anyway, we do have a, uh, a, a caller here. Hold on a second. Let me just make my transition to the Zoom panel. There's Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Alex. How you doing? You're in Texas, boy. You got problem. Yeah. You got problems up the ass in Texas right yep, now. Yep. Another right. new record today. Another, what? 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 Every what, other day. What was the record today? Ten thousand seven hundred and twenty-five. Oh wow! Now that's new cases, right? That's new cases. Because today we that's went up a little hours. bit, but we only have eight hundred and fifty people total in the state in hospitals with COVID. Those aren't the new admissions. It's total admissions. Um, however, we only had five deaths. And uh, how many cases? I think we got up to 1.5% of the people tested had, had had it. And we're worried, you know, that we're going to get an infection coming here uh, because of the uh, people from out of state coming in and uh, not... Uh, um, what do you call it, uh, 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 quarantining themselves. Like if Rob came up to see his relatives here in New York City, he would have to be quarantined, right, Rob? Mm, I'm supposed to go next weekend, not this weekend. Next weekend. Yeah, well, you, uh, uh, the, however, you probably won't have a problem because you're driving, right? Yeah. If you came in through the airport, they actually have you sign something. But my state is not one that's... It's keeping. Um, oh, it's not. Know. It's not on the list. No. Oh, okay. Okay, it's not on the yeah. quarantine. No, Virginia is doing very well. Because everybody, you can understand our 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 yeah. fear here, you know. Because we did everything we could to clean this whole place up, and we did. We did a wonderful job of it, and uh, we just don't want it to get cruddy again, you know. Um, I mean, what we did was, I think, nothing short of amazing. Um, but we, you know, it so easily could go jumping back up. 
And our, our governor is worried about people who come in from out of state and also people here in, uh, in uh, uh, New York who are just not abiding by the rules, you know, wearing the mask, uh, uh, not uh, getting together in groups, uh, social distancing. Uh, I'm sure if you're with somebody you live with, you don't have to social distance, but uh, social distancing from other people. And they, I went past a bar the other night, and they were serving drinks inside with people butt to butt with each other. Yeah. And I was thinking of calling up the authorities and turning them in because they can lose their liquor license for that. You know, um, and they were being allowed to serve people outdoors. I mean, they, they were just getting too terribly greedy about it. And uh, there were a whole bunch of people congregated outside without social distancing, without masks. I mean, that's the kind of thing that's going to put us back in trouble again. Yeah. Yeah. Can't argue with that. Yeah. So, I mean, every other state should probably look at what we did and try to do what we did, take the scientific approach to this. But they're just going, oh, my God, now we've got to, we've got to um, um, do the testing. Well, it's good. Do the testing. But you have to do the science of testing, not just do the testing. Yeah. And then you have to abide by what that testing shows you. And, uh, it, you know, if you see it going up and up and up, then you do something to bring it down, 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 and you more measures to shut things down and close things down. And I know it's horrible and nobody wants to do it. And, you know, but then I hear people going, well, I own this gym, and if I can't reopen, I'm going to have to go out of business. Well, if you reopen, you're going to kill people. And then you go out of business. And then you'll go out of business. So take your choice, you know. I mean, is it lives versus capitalism? You know, Texas. And, and the fact is, somebody was mentioning me the other day that we don't really have capitalism in this country. What we have is corporatism. Yeah. You know, capitalism is one thing. Corporatism is just pure greed, you know, and it's the corporatism that is making us want to get back in the game. Oh, we can't we can't uh, have people, you know, uh, running out on us here. We, we've got to. Uh, uh, we've got to, we've got to, we have to open up all the businesses. We have to get people back to work. We have to kill people. Yes, Phil. Yeah. They never really close the big corporate businesses. They close the, the little guy, uh, the restaurant, the gym, but not the big corporate businesses. They, the they, they, wait a minute, wait, 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 oh, no, the wait, those aren't. So, those aren't big corporate businesses, to be honest with you. Are you kidding? No, you're talking about oh, big corporate businesses. <laughs> IBM doesn't have their offices open. Yeah, but they're 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 doing business. They're doing business, but they're I mean, doing it you like you're like your, you're doing it at home. You don't have to have your corporate offices. My brother's company didn't shut down. Yeah. Um, I don't think any of the big companies shut down. They figured out a way to muddle through until they were able to get people the access they needed that's why zoom made a killing yep um so yeah i think it's more smaller small restaurant you know individual owned restaurants and stuff and corporate you know if you're if you're running a corporate gym yeah you were closed down well let's be honest about it the you know the people who own the restaurants and stuff these are places where it can spread the most because they're yeah, indoors, absolutely. they're indoors, and, and they you're breathing, and you're, <sighs> yeah. What is that doing? You yeah. know, the gym across the street from where I live, they set up all these outdoor tents to be able to uh, have classes and, and and so forth, so that when they uh, when they were supposed to open, they would be able to have some sort of stuff that was outdoors. But they they had these. Yeah, but it, oh, you you mean by you don't mean a full tent? You mean like no? A, it, it, oh, okay, it's covering. A, you know, yeah, I was going to say a tent's the same thing as being indoors. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. And so they, yeah. you know, and uh, so they set up all those things, but they recently uh, reneged on letting them open in this state in California, and uh, uh, they're going to remain closed. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it it's it's a question of look. What happened was California opened up too fast and too soon. And when it did that, uh, you have the problem you have now. 
uh, if they had opened up more wisely, it might not have been the same problem. Okay, uh, but since that has happened, they've got to they've got to back off. You know, that's the only way you're going to stop it. You're not going to stop it by keeping everything open. Well, if you have a, a rise in infections and you think that it's going to overwhelm the health system, mm -hmm. then you start you lock it down again. Yeah, and there are areas of the country, like in Texas, not all of Texas, but Austin and Houston, these places need to be locked down because uh, and and Miami and uh, California's had a huge spike. I, I don't know that all of California needs to be locked down, but certainly Los Angeles and maybe. Well, San here's here's what our governor did when he reopened. He he had a phased reopening. You had different phases, and he opened up upstate before he ever opened up New York City. New York City was the last thing to be opened up because it was the most infectious. Still when, not it. When they, still not phase four, no, right? It, it's, but, no, it's fa I think we're phase three now, if I'm not okay. mistaken. Long Island is phase four. It, no, Long yeah. Island is phase four. Uh, yeah. Upstate is pretty much open. Uh, but some of it may be closed down soon because there was a case uh, upstate in which somebody came from out of state, went to some party that the, mm -hmm. they were holding, okay, uh, and uh, spread it to everybody, to a whole bunch of people. So that, that's, the, that's the problem there, right? You know. uh, now, Marin is, uh, is, is going through uh, a hotspot thing, mm -hmm. but uh, most of these cases if, uh, are, uh, are from San Quentin, and what they did was they moved some inmates from another prison Chino. near Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Chino, was it Chino? Chino. Uh, they, they moved them to San Quentin, and now I don't know how many people in San Quentin have died. Uh, there's a lot of cases, and then uh, they've had several deaths, and that has caused Marin's spike. But it's really the hot spot is San Quentin. Well, right, I, I, it, I would say probably there's a good chance that the hot spot is San Quentin. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, uh, we also have to think about what we're going to do with our prisons because, you know, we are such a litigious country when it comes to throwing people in prisons. We love throwing people in prisons that we have not said, hey, you know, some people shouldn't go to prison. Some people should be put on parole or their whole home, be at home, stuck at home or whatever. Uh, but, you know, they're not dangerous criminals. But we put so many people behind bars that in a place like uh, San Quentin, I don't know if you've seen the facilities over there, they have people living in gyms and all kinds of different places because it is so packed tight with people. So, you know, do we really want that? Uh, and, and do we want that kind of situation? New, uh, California, a few years ago, depopulated some of the prisons because they couldn't afford to keep that many people in prison. And there were a lot of people who were, you know, dr people who were selling marijuana who wound up in prison, you know, people who were not really dangerous criminals. Uh, Those guys didn't wind up in San Quentin. Well, no, but they wound up in prisons. What, your, your they jail. wound up in prisons, Phil. You remember, people went away for like five, ten years for selling pot. I had a buddy in New York back in the 60s that was arrested and went to Attica for eight years uh, for a pound of pot. Yeah. A pound is a lot of eight pot. Eight years? Well, yeah. you know, he, it, it isn't a large amount of pot if you just don't want to run out. <laughs> you know. I don't know if he was uh, using it all for personal consumption, but he was into the marijuana uh, lifestyle. Well, you know, it's kind of terrible that people are be were being, you know, spent so much time in jail for that, and now today, they, if they did the same thing, they wouldn't wind up in jail. You know, they'd wind up home having a store. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. The stores weren't closed. They were considered essential, the marijuana stores, because well, medical marijuana. People I, I, they are they are essential. essential. I, th I think liquor stores are essential, they say. Yeah, they are. Now, I don't know why they're essential, but I think it's essential to keep people from getting the DTs or something. Yeah, like that. absolutely. Portion clinics. Be huh? with three kids all weekend, all week. You'll need a drink. <laughs> well, abortions are a medical procedure, Phil, and so therefore they would be considered necessary 
you, you may not consider them necessary, I do. You know, if people don't want to have children, then they have that right to do that. Yeah, I'll wear a condom. No, <clears throat> or get an abortion if it happens by accident. You know, don't use abortion as a form of birth control, mind you. You know, that's, that's going a little too far. You could just, you know, take a pill, take a condom, do whatever, you know. But listen, we can't even get people to wear masks, so how are we going to get them to yeah. wear condoms? <laughs> yeah, you're asking for a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although today I took a walk and I found more I people wearing masks than I have sure. seen before. Mm. And I think they're getting the message, you know, that everything's fine. Coast is clear in a lot of ways, but let's not screw it up. Hey, Tony, are you a little pissed off that you had your teeth fixed now that you can just wear a mask? <laughs> I don't think I own 200 miles still, so I got it. They've been closed. I want to pay them off. I know. Hmm. They're pretty much straight. I, I got a new mask, by the way. Are you gonna, I, I got, got a Charlie Brown one. one. I got a new one. Watch Blue. Tony, you're, so in, you're in the these. kitchen? And you're in the yeah, kitchen tonight? I thought in the beginning you know, they were a little uncomfortable. On the couch, so I can't go in the living room. <laughs> let me, uh, let me try putting this on without my <laughs> earphones on I here. First of all, here we go. First, I take this and I put it here. Yeah, that looks kinda, and then it's got a clasp in the back. Oh, that's a serious here, so I can yeah. 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 You're ready to loot. <laughs> it's like a Hannibal Lecter look mask. cool? Huh? Am I... Yeah. Am I uh, and... And it was, a, I took a walk with this today, and it was a lot easier to breathe in. I was going to say, is that one of those breathable ones? Yeah, yeah. it's got these uh, holes here. With the, Does with it feel better? You know, yeah, when I go to better. Kaiser, mm -hmm. they if I wear one of those N95s with the vent, mm -hmm. they, yeah, they, yeah, another one of those <laughs> <Come> on, <laughs> to put over it. <laughs> oh, they said that it doesn't stop the spittle okay. from me going out, but it will stop from them coming in so uh really yeah that is, uh so yeah they make me put something over oh look at, well what uh, kind of Alex, mask, I, what kind of i found the picture Maybe i saw this picture -string online what? is that a g-string that, that's your other mask that's my other mask yeah, yeah, yeah. all you got to do is say hello clarice yeah. <laughs> uh yeah it, it's uh, the n95 uh with a vent with uh, a it's check so well. they, they give me the surgical mask and they wanted to put it right over it and like you know i'll just yeah because it's got a one-way check valve that lets right. stuff in, but yeah. it doesn't let but, it out um, like the um right those n95s the are pretty uh, hold on a second now i'm all tangled got a diaphragm here. that goes hold one on. way right uh come so here. my diaphragm come here. Will come here. out but not in right correct oh, go the other, other way um, um, yeah. uh, the trouble with those masks, uh, with the N95s, is is that even with the vent, they're very uncomfortable. Yeah, they're Alex, quite uncomfortable, and they're not they're not really necessary. They're not going to protect you much more than a uh, than a uh, regular a surgical yeah, mask. Here. Yeah, my yeah. brother bought them on eBay. It's horrible. I can't even wear them. I feel like I'm going to suffer. I want to get a Trump mask with the presidential seal. I wonder if they're going to have them on his website. Mr. the print. It's Chuck Woolery. He'll send you one. Yeah, yeah. sell them. Yeah. 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 Call, yeah. call, 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 call his new Surgeon General, Chuck Woolery. Can <laughs> you believe this? Come yeah. on. Yeah. Hey, that, that guy was dead already. 50 bucks each. Dude, he was dead. You're right. I didn't even know he was alive still. Who, Chuck Woolery? Tony, your, your speaker's they muffled. Kevin, hmm? speaker's they, muffled, sell, Tony. they sell the mask? Oh, I'm sure they do. This goes oh, oh, I thought you said floor. 50 bucks each. They probably do, and they probably will be 50 bucks each. <laughs> yeah, it would be it would be funny if it were a mask where it just made you look like Donald Trump. They, they have that where he, it's really? got his mouth kind of scrunched up oh, like that, <laughs> and then it, uh, it says something on the sides. Have you seen that? Yeah, something like Trump, Trump. Trump sucks. Fuck Trump. I can get one. I want Is to, anybody I, I, what? able to drive from one state to another? Uh, I haven't tried. Well, Rob's going to do that soon, but he oh, is in a state that is not on the uh, on the quarantine list. Right. I won't even travel drive from one apartment complex to another. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm not nuts about it, but I do want to go see my mom. So. Well, I think you're going to find it pretty safe. As a matter of fact, I'm almost thinking about trying a subway soon. Because Marjorie took a subway the other day and said she's never seen it cleaner. Yeah. Now, clean subway? 
I never heard those two words in the same breath. You know, <laughs> we'll go back to work. What? And, and when people go back to work in New York and the subways are more crowded, I understand they're going to put more cars on mm -hmm. and, and run more trains. Yeah. But yeah. they've been shutting down the subways for like four hours in the middle of the night. Yeah. To clean everything right now. Yeah. That's why they're sparkling clean. Oh, I thought that was to oust the homeless. No, no. I mean, they, that was one of the things it did. Really? And, and they, they made provisions for them to be someplace. They had places for them to go. New Jersey. You know, and as our governor said, he said, it's terrible that someone would think that he has to sleep on a subway in order to get a good place to sleep, you know, and that we just have to make them realize that, hey, there are other facilities available. You know, so. A lot of them don't want those places. They get robbed. They get beat up. They'd rather be on their own. Well, you know, also there, a lot of them are not mentally right. Well, there's that. They, you know, and um, they should be someplace that's going to watch over them. I mean, granted, you're right. But I think those were the old places you're thinking of. I think what they were doing was they were trying to actually have safe places for them to go. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, they had to they had to push them out of there because people had to go in there and clean. Yeah, you know, and uh, uh, and that doesn't mean they don't go down there during the day and do some sleeping or whatever. But I think they're not used to it anymore, so that's that's not as big a problem. Uh, but you know, I mean, we have uh, just had uh, this is this has really been something all the way around, and it's it's really very very. I have been getting very depressed, and uh, hmm. I'm always lightheaded and tired, and, you know, I, I've finally pushed myself to go out and take a walk every day, which is helping a little <laughs> bit, helping a little bit. Time like Alex a little bit. But, but uh, I just, I wake up in the morning, and I'm tired, you know, as I always am when I first wake up, but I stay that way all day, you know, because there's nothing to look forward to, you know? I can't get on a subway and go down to Apple and buy a new mouse. Like, I bought a new mouse online the other day. But under normal conditions, I would have just said, ah, I'll get on the subway and go down to the Apple store and buy it, you know? And I couldn't do that. I just couldn't do that. You should have saved all the Apple bags from your previous purchases, and then you could have put it in the bag and walked around with it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it would have made me feel good. Yeah. Is the Apple store open again? No. None of them. Well, uh, the, the, in California, I think they opened up a few of them, and then they closed them right back down again. Uh, I went by. I didn't go in, but I drove by it yesterday, and it looked open, and people were in there. Uh, well, I think they'll probably, if you drive by it now, it'll be closed. Yeah, I was going to go to the Monterey one, and they, I think they shut it down again. Yeah. So, you know, and plus... It is a, uh, you know, it, for it, you're just simply doing indoor purchases. You're not, uh, you're not hanging around and taking a class or I imagine you can't go to the genius bar. I don't know. You know, because if they're geniuses, they'll know well enough to stay home. You know, so. Hi, like Kevin. Thing. How are you? All right. How are you? <laughs> oh, okay, Kevin. Um, how's your leg doing? Good. Good? Doing fine. So you're, you're, you're healing. Okay. Yeah. Did they have to stitch that thing up? Twelve of them. Oh, oh God. That's right. I've never had stitches, uh, mm. for anything. Uh, I think maybe I had stitches. No, right no, nothing. You know, uh, you turn yourself sideways there. There you go. Go, Ray. Hey, Ray. Hey, hey. There, hey. there you go. There's Ray Renati, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Well, we'll find out if planes are clean because I'm going to go get my nose stuffed on Thursday. And if I come out positive, then we'll know that the planes aren't clean. <laughs> oh, because you took a plane. Yeah, I took a plane last okay. week. Okay. So you wanted to see if it's if it's yeah. okay. Yeah. I don't see how they can uh, filter on a plane. You know, people get sick. Just from, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it recirculates. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are filters. They say they're really, really hefty filters, and there's a ridiculous amount of times per hour that the air is completely circulated yeah. out. Yeah. In, in, in clean rooms, we have in clean rooms we have those HEPA filters, mm -hmm. but also 
for clean rooms, they also grab air from the floor too. So they circulate all that, that air. So in clean rooms, there's a huge, well, huge so, volume of air. Supposedly, going those there, is, they come off the there is a filter that the governor is recommending that he's going to say he's going to ask malls to install and <laughs> restaurants to install if they can do it. If they can't do it, they can't reopen. Called MERV 15s. And these things will filter out COVID. Hmm. In other words, they recirculate the air, they suck it in from the room, goes through the filter, and comes out without any COVID in it. So what do they do? All those filters are just yeah, all those filters are just mesh. So yeah. those mesh that those have on those filters are smaller, so they only allow certain size particles through. Yeah. yeah. But when you That's go their, to sure stuffing them down the hallways of the hospitals too. When you go to change those filters, then you've got all these uh, virus in the filter. No, uh, you can don't. Can it take that long? Or? I don't think you have. You, no, it doesn't stay on the surface. No. It doesn't stay on the hmm. surface, and I think they probably have an antibacterial agent in there or an antiviral <laughs> agent as well. Uh, you know, the governor has said, look, I don't know if this is the answer, but it certainly is better than nothing, you know, uh, and that it may be a way that we can have people go back to malls but, you know, malls are in trouble. I, I saw a story the other day about this. The malls are in trouble because the movie theaters are closed. Yeah. And the movie theaters are going out of business. I mean, AMC, I think, is packing up and going away. And uh, these yeah. malls all depended on those movie theaters as being the drawing factor to the mall. Uh, they also depended on the uh, Macy's and the J.C. Which Penny those are dying. Years. Yeah, those uh, are gone. Mm -hmm. Bankrupt. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've always had my eye in, uh, on uh, there's a mall in Concord mm -hmm. and, uh, and the Sears had this standalone automotive area. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would make a good floor covering store. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could afford the uh, rent. Ray's got his hand up. Yes, Ray. I just want to see how your temperature is doing. My temperature? I got a yeah. What, what do you mean? How much? Did, my... did you get did you get your new thermometer? Oh, I got one. You got it? What do you mean my new thermometer? I have my old thermometers. You didn't get a thermometer? No. Why? Oh, crap. Did you send... I sent you a, I sent you a thermometer. <laughs> Look what I've got. Is that a rectal? Look what I've got. Yeah. I'm, I'm a such rectal a, uh, thermometer. Hold, hold on a second. Rectal thermometer. I am such a... Um, um, uh, Probably went to apartment L and not I. <laughs> yeah, it's happened a few times. Anyway. Tony, Tony your speaker is you really muffled. Had. First of all, uh, I have uh, my really old thermometer. Okay, wait a minute. Let me put this back on so I can. Oh hear man, you. I'm going to complain. I have the old thermometer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, this one is. Uh, let's see here. This is. Uh, let me put it in. It's very fast. I love it because it's fast. <laughs> I have the same a thermometer uh, mm -hmm. for, from CVS, mm -hmm. and uh, it always reads low. Mm -hmm. you know, how can it? How can I have a ninety-two point something or other? You know, mm -hmm. one of your neighbors has your thermometer. Oh, ninety-eight point four. That's high for me today. But mm. this one sometimes reads differently. This is another CVS. Okay, mm -hmm. let me see here. Mm hmm. I think, I think Marjorie's using it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? I think Marjorie's got it. <laughs> actually, it was a joke. It had it was a it was a joke thermometer. It was actually a meat thermometer. It was ninety eight package. Ninety eight point four as well. Wow. I guess because I'm in a room that's kind of hot, right? Oh, and then I've got this. It off until you this, stick it in your mouth, right? this is a uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, Celsius. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, then ultimately I got this. I got that one too. Yeah, it's good. Ninety-five point two. Don't do it, Alex. Don't do it. Ninety-five point <laughs> two. Yeah, he's having me in anyway. You with that sucker? Yeah, ninety-five point four. I see. These things. I, I went to Kaiser the other day to uh, pick something up at the pharmacy, mm -hmm. and before they'd let me in, they used a similar thing to what you held up to your forehead, Alex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and what they did. I was waiting in the sun, you know, they, they had your weight uh, oh, six feet apart. 98.8. Wow, yeah, so by waiting in the sun, I went in there, I was like 102. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, they said, well, sit down and let it cool off, and, and, and it went down to normal. 
Wow. Mm-hmm. 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 COVID test. Now I'm worried because I got my temperature high. That's the first sign, the temperature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's normal? 98.6. 6. Well, now it's, this one's 98.2. That one was 98.8. So let me try this one more time. Uh, 98.2. Also, I was eating, I was drinking some, uh, some tea here and it's still warm. This is exciting stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, really. Yeah, I agree. You started it. <laughs> I you know. Started I know. It, right? actually, I'm not kidding. I actually like it. It is funny. Mm-hmm. 98.1. See, this one keeps going down. So, And this one, this one's always the high one. I don't know why it, uh, uh, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Oh God! <laughs> Let me see here. This is ninety-eight point four now. So anyway, uh, uh, I'm low enough. I'm not dying. Uh, uh, and I haven't got the COVID. Uh, I don't think, you know. So anyway, that's. That's what I do for my temperature. So you sent me a thermometer? I did. It was a really good one. It was a rectal thermometer. Oh, oh it's a rectal. By the way, yeah. that, that one I have there, the newest CVS I have, is a rectal thermometer, as well as a oral thermometer, as well as an armpit thermometer. It has three tips wow. you can put on. Yeah. And it knows which you better tip. check with Marjorie and make sure she's only been using it in her mouth. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. That would be horrible. Well, no, oh, the, the, the rectal tip is different than the... <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Although they say the rectal thermometer is the most uh, accurate. Most accurate, yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, that, that, that rumor was started by some gay guy. Uh, I, don't like a, I don't like a fleet enema. I'm certainly not going to want a thermometer up there. I, you know, I got, I've gotten so used to the fleet enema because of all the times I had to use it, like before I would go in every day for my, uh, my little procedure, my, my you radiation. You used it every day? Every day I'd do it for the radiation, yeah. Well, yeah, me, I, I have to clear the bowel for the radiation, and I've been having problems. I got up at 4 this morning. Took two Dokalax the uh, mm-hmm. night before, last night. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I have I've had a tough time. They pulled me off the table the other day, Friday, because uh, I, I was full of shit. <laughs> well, we've, we've been telling you that for the longest time. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and they gave me a fleet enema. Well, they gave me the, the thing to go use. And uh, it, I don't like it. Yeah, I just never, you know what it was with the fleet? What are we talking fleet enemas for? Forget it. I yeah. was, was going to say, it's just the problem is you don't know how much is, you're supposed You squeeze it, right? And you don't know if you're putting enough up there. It doesn't take that much. Mm, no. But anyway, um, so I, uh, I got a, uh, I got a uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, um, uh, what's the thing you t- all told me I should go out and buy? Oh, an air filter. Elf air purifier. Oh, you finally got one. Okay. one yeah, but it, it's good for about. It, it has a picture. No, it says it says, two hundred and seventy-five feet or something. Mm-hmm. But it and then it has a picture diagonally across a room, and I'm thinking, well, my room is two that way, but square feet, it's five hundred. Put it in the corner. I think is what they mean. Well, yeah, I guess. I don't know. But I'm going to see if it works. It's a cheap one. It's like 99 bucks. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to, I, and, but it does some kind of relief or keeps dust out of the room, I may go out and spend 200 bucks and get the big one. Yeah. Or get two of them. Is that what, a filter? One. Huh? It has a filter? Yeah. yeah. Oh, HEPA yeah. HEPA filter. Are these like HEPA, HEPA filters? Is that what they are? Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. you can see yeah. if it's getting dirty then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The one I got from Sharper Image uh, has these metal, uh, uh, it's not a filter, it's a, like a collection thing. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, um, it's the like electromet, yeah, ionic. the uh, ionic. Oh, by the way, the other day I had an Apple uh, mouse go out on me. It was going yeah. bad. So I decided I'd better, in fact, I was on with uh, Kevin, right, Kevin? And I was having trouble with my mouse. So I immediately, while I was talking with Kevin and Josh and and the three of us, 
I, uh, I went online and I ordered a new mouse. I did this at about 11 o'clock at night. Damn thing came here at by by eight o'clock the next day. <laughs> oh. wow. You know, wow. it's like they must have walked it over from the store. Do yeah, they know? bring it up to your door now, or do they just leave it in the It lobby? came to my door. Yeah, I think it came. Ask to them if they have your thermometer. <laughs> well, who knows? It may be down there. I didn't go down and look at the mail. Oh, okay. Because you know, it probably go in the mailbox because it's small. But is there a reason why you sent me a rectal thermometer? Is that supposed to say because, something to me? <laughs> because I was looking at it. It's a joke. Well, I don't want to give it. I gave it away now. It's a meat thermometer packaged as a rectal thermometer. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, can't they get in trouble for that? Because people, I don't know. people might stick funny. the meat thermometer up their ass. It was like five bucks. I know. That's what I was thinking. Someone could actually do it. Isn't this? A, a I saw something like that somewhere where it says something on there, like it's, uh, you know. Well, anyway. Yeah. So just get sued. Yeah. Now, did Trump recommend that you use a meat thermometer? Probably. A probably. <laughs> After you inject yourself with because with you know we, we we were all all enamored of his medical degree. That makes mm -hmm. him better than Dr. Fauci. You know. Dr. Rollery suggested it. it yeah. A, uh, well, speaking of that? ass insertions, did anybody see the, uh, the uh, press conference today? I saw a little bit of it, and then I started throwing up in my mouth. Holy and shit. I. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, here's what I didn't like about it. Well, there are a lot of things I didn't like about it, but the thing that I basically didn't like about it was the fact that he held it as a press conference. Now, yeah. when you hold a press conference as president, you're probably going to make some kind of policy statement, and then you're going to take some questions from the press and whatever. That isn't what he did. It was like, I don't know, what, a two-hour speech or something in which he, he railed against tool. everything? He used them all as a tool. Yeah. And, and, and you know, uh, uh, I just, uh, I found, I mean, if he wants to give a speech, fine. You know, tell us you're going to give a speech. You, you, you're, not, you're doing safe distancing and you're going to give a speech and you're, you're going to do it in the press conference room or whatever. But say it's a speech. Don't bill it as a press conference. The Biden list was what, 45 minutes long? Yeah. The Biden shit list? My God, and he was making shit up. I couldn't believe. You know what I would what I would love to do if I were the head of the Democratic National Committee, I would go to somebody who I think could also win the election, like Cuomo, and and convince Biden that it would be in the best interest of the party to suddenly decide not to run and they suddenly switch candidates. And Trump has spent all this time aiming at Biden. He isn't even nominated yet, but he's going after him. Uh, and 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 that would that would just throw Trump off just completely. He wouldn't know what to do, you know. But yeah. but it was you know yeah it was a rant against Biden, and, you know and uh, what Trump originally said that he thought he was going to be running against Bernie. And then all of a sudden it was Biden. Remember when uh, Bernie was doing well and Biden yeah, got uh, yeah. the help in South Carolina by um, uh, that congressman? Clyburn. Yeah, well, I, I don't think I don't think Trump was really going after anybody until there was a presumptive nominee. You know, I mean, he did say bad things. He trashes everybody, no matter what he does. Uh, but he he I think was not trashing. Um, he was not trashing uh, Biden uh, or Bernie outside of saying things occasionally about them. But now if there's a presumptive candidate, uh, that's the guy he's going after. But he's not the candidate yet. You know? He's just the presumptive candidate. So, I mean, but to, to, to say it's a press conference and to bill it that way and then to suddenly give a speech against all these various things that he's touting and trying to say what wonderful things he's done. At one point, he said, we had the highest we've had the highest employment rate ever. And I'm going, have you looked at it these days? We did have the no, highest. No, no, no. He kind of tr almost wants you to believe that it still is the highest 
You see, uh, you know, the Democrats or the left want to believe that all the Republicans just fell off the turnip truck and, and believe the fact that this COVID uh, the unemployment level is permanent. And uh, a it's lot still, of it is permanent, Phil. Some of it, but no, uh, a lot of it. Part, a lot I think of the it. economy is coming back, and no. so does most, most people. No, it's not. You look at the stock market, it keeps bumping up and down. Well, it always bumps up and down. No, I mean bumping up. It's not been budging much. It, it's been actually going trending downward. Anybody who knows anything about economics is saying that this is not going to come back before the election is over. It's going to be about 18 months before the economy really completely rebounds. Well, I don't know if it's going to completely rebound that fast. I mean, and the stock market's not really the only indicator. I mean, there's no. a lot of it's my thousand dollars. Well, who cares about your thousand dollars? It has nothing to do. <laughs> it went up because. Uh, yeah, and mine's gone up, and now it, it, when you go over to my serious stock, it's taken a real dump. You know, five hundred and fifty-six points today. Yeah, and then it went down six hundred yesterday. Uh. I don't. Know. I don't think so. Yeah, I Maybe. follow it every day, Phil. It's still over a thousand. I fill it. Uh, what? I, my 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 value was still over a thousand, so uh, I don't think it went down that far. And if it did, it, it, well, it, it, you, you look at it. Where 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 was it? Where was it when when it started tanking? Was it something like it was, was it now? Was it twenty nine thousand? Yeah, and now it's at uh, twenty six six. Yeah, that's still a big dump. Yeah, well, it went down to eighteen. I wish I would have bought more then. Oh yeah, you're big in the stock market. Yeah, nice well, tag? Phil, I don't have a lot of stock, but I've got a great deal more than you have. Well, I, what I'm going to do now that I'm getting Social Security and my first check is going to arrive any day, or they're going to deposit into the account any day, uh, I just take that and put it into the Dow Fund that I bought. Mm, okay, I'm good. Keep doing good. That until it stops working. Yeah, yeah. Because Trump is such a good businessman that the stock market's going to do terrific. Mm -hmm. You know, it did. You know, it did terrific under was Obama. Well, uh, wasn't it down around five thousand uh, at the time Obama started? Uh, no, it wasn't down around five thousand. It hasn't been down around five thousand since I was a kid. No, 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 there was a time when it was, it was uh, in the five thousand. I think uh, what. Yeah. Around eight thousand when George Bush left office. I mean, it yeah, it gone down as low. And what was it? What was it? Do you remember what it was once Obama left office? Uh, oh, you can Google that. Eighteen. Yeah, I was more than eighteen. And and and, and you have to consider the next year at least part of the Obama bump. You know, uh, it, it's not like all of a sudden Trump becomes president and whatever the stock does is his doing. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, but he 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 takes no blame for anything, you know. And, but he and does take the credit, doesn't he? he you know, he tries uh, to take wore, the credit. He yeah. wore a mask, and they got on him for not being uh, 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 genuine. And <laughs> then when he doesn't wear a mask, they get on him for not wearing a mask. He can't win. Look, so Phil, it doesn't matter what he does now. He has so fucked us up. That's all because of him. He, he 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 reaps what he sows. He uh, no. if he's disingenuous or people perceive it as such is because what it's because of the way that he carries himself and the things that he says and his actions. This is not made up. People watch this man. Oh yes, they do. So you have to admit he really is about the bottom line. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You can't say. Well, I quite He's frankly think he should guy. be charged with uh, dereliction of duty. Actually, I uh, think... I think like, uh, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. Uh, Mar Rob was saying something. I think uh, he, 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 people around him should be charged with dereliction of duty. It's just, you know, I've said this before, you know, you talk about people who do bad things like Jerry Sandusky, who, you know, yeah. molested all those boys. He's, it's one thing to be sick. It's another thing to cover it up. Yeah. I think that's like, worse. What cover-up? 
What cover up? Are yeah. you kidding? Really? Oh, come on. I just <laughs> asked the question. Cover what cover up? up? What do you cover up? He's we don't know you. because we're people. Uh, just, so uh, we don't know what he people, covered it up, but so, he probably so, covered it up. So when 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 the Congress uh, when the Congress uh, uh, asks people, what do you call that? They tell people to go. What's the word? To go and testify, and they refuse. If they have nothing to cover up, why are they refusing? Mm-hmm. If they're subpoenaed, there's the word. Beats me, ah. but he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Phil, oh, Phil, no. Phil. If he, if he had nothing to hide with his taxes, do you fishing. do you do you agree with the following statement? Uh, Donald Trump is the law and order president. He thinks he is. Uh, yeah, yeah. He thinks he is. Do you think he is? Uh, in some ways, he's pro law and order. In other ways, I don't think so. No. But he calls himself the law and order president. As long as it's not against him. Yeah, well, wait a minute. If he's the law and order president, why did he pardon Roger Stone? Yeah. What is the, what's that all about? He, he didn't pardon him. He commuted his sentence. Oh, well, commuted his sentence. Excuse me. I know. It, I understand, Phil. I made a mistake. I meant, I meant commuted. Well, because he felt that it was unfair and a, and a death sentence. And, uh, you know, to send a guy uh, that has uh, those his friend. Issues, and his friend to uh, the prison. He felt that Stone was railroaded, and this will give Stone a chance to appeal uh, his his conviction. But Stone said that this, he'd end up with the same judge who was very anti-Stone and anti-Trump, so it might not be worth Yeah, that's really, that's really terrible. But he was found guilty by a jury. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he still... And, 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 and he, he was found guilty. guilty of about seven counts, was it? Something like that? Yep. It, that hasn't changed. Well, then why why do you commute that sentence? And why are you okay with that, Mr. Law and Order? Well, I'm okay with the fact that the president has the right to commute anybody oh. he wants. And so he, know, can, he, he has the right to do whatever 11, he wants, and that's okay. He's given 11 pardons uh, mm-hmm. since he took office. Mm-hmm. Do you know that Obama gave over 1,700? Doesn't matter. And, and most of those were it most matter, Obama. Most of those were at the end of each term, right? So Trump has the balls. Let's see how many people. Let's election. see how many people Trump pardons. Let, Trump has the balls, even facing re-election and knowing that he's going to get pushback on this, to do what he feels is right. I, you know, he's not chicken waiting for the last day. Do what he's right. Do what he feels is right. How does he know that? What do you mean? That's all he has to do is feel it. He's not exactly the kind of right guy. He has. He changes his mind every three days. Your your friend Donald Trump has the right to pardon Mm. whoever he wants, whenever he wants. That's part of the deal, and he hasn't abused it. Uh, And and you know Clinton pardoned uh, Clinton pardoned a woman. That had a 58 year sentence. And, uh, you know, and he pardoned her, didn't commute her sentence. He pardoned her. And Is now she's playing somewhere. Of Black yeah, Black is Black somebody Black. playing music somewhere? The piano? Do you hear it? Yeah. No. It stopped now. The piano? Yes. It was my four year old downstairs, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's a long travel distance. Yeah. Good piano. Good microphone. Did you, did you know that Roger Stone and Trump and Roy Cohn were all buddies? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. want to throw that out there. Uh, not only buddies, not only buddies, uh, he learned at the feet of, of Roy Cohn. Roger Stone also kind of threatened Trump that I, I stayed, I stayed, I could have all this stuff I could have told about you and I didn't tell it. That's not what he said. What he said was, I would not bear false witness against the president. That's what he said. They wanted him to lie, and he said, I won't. And so... Because he's so moral. hmm? He's such a moral guy. Yeah. I guess he is, when it comes to dealing with 
He got convicted for lying. They no, come on, man. So, lying come on. They How, you know, let me, let me, ask, let me ask you, on. let me ask you a question. Though. How does Trump go to sleep at night knowing there are 135,000 dead people right now in this country under his watch? Well, if Melania was sitting on my no, face. No, come on, great. come on, Phil. I'm asking uh, you a serious yes. question. Yes. That You do that when you don't want to answer the question. Well, let me tell you. It's not Trump's fault that 135,000 people are dead. The whole world, there's only nine countries out of, what, uh, 200 countries that don't have coronavirus issues. Phil, Phil, do you know what happened in, in Italy? What happened in France? What happened in England? Wait a minute, let me finish. What happened in a lot of countries in Europe? It went up precipitously. They closed down, and then it went down as fast as it came up, and it stayed there. It has leveled at the bottom. Meanwhile, we'll meanwhile, yeah. ours went up, and then it leveled a little bit because New York brought it down, and then it's gone up even further. Phil, well, Phil, the, don't, don't say European countries. They did their job. They're safer now than they were then. Alex, you're twisting things because we had some areas that were hot spots that went up. Mm -hmm. Now those areas have gone down, and uh, other areas uh, are going Phil, through their. Don't minimize How do you it. Know? Wait a minute. Let let Brian join in here. He's How do here. you know? How do I know? The leader doesn't talk about it. The the leader pretends like it's not there. He says everything's. We're in a good shape. We're in a good place right now. That's mm -hmm. bullshit. It's a big country. And, and, and there are Phil, all of it. Phil, the good and the bad Phil uh, it's a big country, but something like 36 out of the 48 states have rises in incidents of uh, COVID and right. deaths and so on. So that's not blame? just some of the country is only having a problem. Blame? Is it not the people that aren't wearing masks, that aren't social distancing, that aren't, you know, that maybe. And he should say something. Lives? Well, then he should have been wearing a mask a long time ago as an example. He should have been urging people to wear masks. He didn't do that. Even his During wife today's press conference, he should have been number one subject, and he said nothing about it. He can well, exactly. He can. But Chuck Willery, MD, you know, he knows. <laughs> yeah, he goes and retweets that. Yeah. Chuck Willery, MD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chuck, he, Chuck Willery. Oh, you're not, you're not aware of Chuck Willery? No. Oh, Chuck Woolery, the host oh, of uh, Love, Co Love Connection, Love yeah. Connection, and formerly of Wheel of Fortune, and, uh, and also now the representative for some arthritis balm, wrote uh, some tweets about how the whole coronavirus thing is a fake, and your dear friend and president Donald Trump retweeted them. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, what? Yeah, probably what? We made sense at the time. <laughs> it was yesterday, said, Phil. Yeah, it was yesterday. yesterday. Oh, it was too. yesterday, Phil. The twelfth. Don't read it. All right. Hey, you the know the same, the same guy that said a lot of white guys are getting killed too. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> kids that are getting killed uh, through the lawlessness in the streets due to uh, the keep talking, Phil. Keep talking. Yeah, there we go. No, you, you got all of these uh, democratic cities that want to defund the police, and now you got guys, you know, running around shooting kids, one-year-olds, in in Brooklyn. You know, okay with that? Hmm. They want to reorganize the police, even though they keep saying defund. They mean reorganize. Yeah. Okay. So you know, send a social worker to a DUI. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, they, they don't want in Berkeley, you know, they don't want cops making traffic stops. Uh, yesterday, Berkeley City Councils uh, voted uh, no more traffic stops by police. Yeah, but Berkeley's insane. We all know that. By police. I lived there for 20 years. By police. Berkeley. Yeah, they don't want any more traffic stops by police. They, they want... Uh, let, let me let me That's let me the, read the worst example. Let me read to you uh, what Chuck Woolery uh, wrote as a tweet. Let me see. Let me do this so that I can get this larger for my audience. There we go. All right. Uh, the most outrageous lies are the ones about COVID-19. 
everyone is lying. The CDC, media, Democrats, our doctors, not all, but most that we are told to trust. I think it's all about the election and keeping the economy from coming back, which is about the election. I'm sick of it. That's Chuck Woolery, and it was retweeted by Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. I agree with World is what flat. Trump Woolery said. I think that <sighs> uh, I think that the Democrats are trying to kill the economy and you the people. Sit there and you say, "Oh well, look at the unemployment. Look at the stock market." <laughs> well, are you, this is exactly people. what you want, and you're complicit in it, and you and you're cheering. How about all the people on. who are dying, Phil? How about all the hospitals and, and that are filled up? Phil, again, I say so there are 135 wow, people wow, wow, in America wow. dead yeah. as a result of this virus, Phil. And this guy goes to sleep at night and can sleep knowing that on his watch, in his watch of protecting Americans, 135 people are dead now because of his inaction and his dereliction of duty. Well, I don't believe... That it's his. I know you don't, but you know, but it it is. Yeah, it's the Democrats who are in power right now, right? The Democrats are in power, so they they've caused all this. They're all powerful. They're more powerful than the majority sits in the White House. The CDC doesn't know what they're talking about. Uh, 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 Dr. Fauci is to be discredited. There Uh, is a new. He has a. There's a a new true north. It's called Donald Trump. Everything else that we've been taught, everything else we've learned is all askew now. It's all a lie. There's a new true north, and his name is Donald Trump. Uh, it works for me. <laughs> for Phil, come on. Homer, the CDC no is fucked was, up. The FBI is fucked I, up. I, I like CIA what Chuck is fucked said. Up. I agree with that. Everything's fucked up. Just I think he has one man. Valerie, I think do you think that you think this whole COVID that, thing is a hoax? Then it's a hoax. I, I think that the way you, the Democrats are playing it, it's a hoax. They're taking <laughs> they're taking a catastrophe and they're trying to use it to their political advantage. Oh, Phil, you're a bunch of idiots who are opening up states yeah, because they believe the bullshit they're being told by their leader. Phil, let, 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 let me let me say this. It. Let me say something here. Yeah. Uh, none of us no matter how much to the left we are, would be saying any of these things if we felt this president was doing something. I think okay, well, let me finish, Phil, please. Uh, if, if we felt that he was doing something, more than anything, we would like to be, him, we would love to have him surprise us at the ability he had to rally this country and to solve this problem but he didn't do it. It's not that we wanted him to do that. It's not that we wanted it because he would lose an election or because the economy would go down. We did none of those things, Phil. Uh, We wanted him to succeed more than anything because our lives depended on it and he let us down. Yes, Rob, Rob. So so back in 2001, after 9-11, this was a pretty divided country. Mm -hmm. Lots of people didn't like W. Right. There was a very divided country then as well. 9-11 happened. We had a major catastrophe. George Bush did a great job of uniting Americans. Right. He united all of us. He united. And I couldn't stand him either. He united all of us. He was our president. We have a bigger crisis now with 135,000 people and counting dead. And this guy has done nothing to unite Americans. Just under one thing, please wear a mask. That's yeah. a simple thing. Why couldn't you? W do stood no. up there. W stood up there and, and actually made made me proud. Exactly, I agree. And and it's you know that that was that was a big thing. I I couldn't stand him. This is a different time, a different person, and he is who. That's he right. Is. You're right. You're right. right. Different time and a different they, person. He was duly elected. And this is the way he operates. If you and don't, this is like what him, we got. no, he wasn't duly elected. He was helped by the Russians. Okay, ah, Phil. Bullshit. He was helped by the Russians. Duly elected or not, you know, he, this is what we got, and this is yeah. what we're reaping. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes, Charlie, you haven't said anything tonight. Anything you want to put in here? Because you get, I'm sure you're seething. Yeah, I, I, I've shouted out a couple of things, but I guess I got. <laughs> Buried in the pathetic. Country. Well, then say what you got to say. Trump has no policy that he's pushed. At least George Bush 
pushed a policy and stood by it and, like you said, united the people. Charlie, his, George Trump Bush has been policy was the people. that Saddam Hussein had WMDs and we went in there and started a 19 year war. That's what we're that's not. What, we're not. That's not what they're talking about. We're talking about I, his initial I, his initial hope. his initial bringing yeah. of the country together during a time of 9-11. Well, he then also it's a better a better tr a track on doing the right thing. Oh, just the opposite. Just the opposite. But no it? matter what he does, you wouldn't be happy. No, with Phil, it. I would be oh, happy. Not true. If not he true. said a couple things the last couple of days that I like, and I was, I was, yeah. I mean, he, he's not going to push for the dreamers to get kicked out anymore. Apparently, right on. I was like, right on, Trump. If he would do things I, that that makes sense, I'm all for it. You know, he tried to do that uh, when he wanted. Phil, well, he didn't know how to bring a country together to solve this problem. It could have been solved earlier. It could have been snipped in the bud earlier if the federal government had been on the spot. I am so fortunate. I am so lucky that I live in New York State where I've got a governor who took the bull by the horns once he took the bull by the horns and, and, and quelched this thing to where we were the most infected city in the world, Phil, and now we're the least infected. Well, don't count your chickens before they hatch because it can turn... On, on New it, York. It can like absolutely, on and we are Florida. ever vigilant about that, Phil, and, the, and, and we are afraid that because the rest of the country is getting infected that we're going to get infected. Yes, Charlie? Yeah, and I also believe that if anything did happen and, it, and they started getting another spike, that, that Cuomo would do something about it. Greg Abbott is not doing shit about it. His, he's just sitting there letting it all happen. It's just running rampant. People are Every fucking hospital in Texas is full. You get sick with something, you got to sit around and wait for a bed to open up. Phil, 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 uh, on Saturday, uh, we had zero, zero Ooh. deaths in New York City. Today, yeah. we had, uh, yesterday, we had five deaths in the entire state. Mm -hmm. That's down from 800, Phil. Somebody mm -hmm. knew what he was doing. He was smart. He saved our life. He saved Couldn't our have been lives. a Democrat. Huh? Couldn't have been I a mean, Democrat he, that knew what he was doing. No. Well, oh, he made sure of that during the speech. You know. Um, uh, we ignore a lot of things that he did do that killed a lot of people. One third of all of the deaths in New York were in uh, assisted care facilities. Wrong. Yes. Wrong. Absolutely, absolutely wrong, Phil. 6,000. That, that, uh, you, there were more. There were something like thirty thousand people that died in the state of New York. That isn't a third. All right. So. Well, Phil, and, you're lying. That isn't a third. It's not great. lying. It's math. It's, it's bad 6, math. Six thousand people. It's Twenty percent. Six thousand oh, people God. died because of Cuomo's actions. No, not because of Cuomo's actions. Because of what the government suggested we do. No, they didn't. Never. Yes, they, they didn't. did. The yes, CDC did. had recommendations on how to handle the uh, yes. nursing homes, and for 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 a time, our governor abided by that. And then, when he saw that it was all wrong, he changed his tune. And now, uh, virtually uh, maybe a handful every day of the deaths. If there were five deaths in this state, maybe one of them was in an assisted living I home. I saw the uh, video where he said. That if you, when the homes didn't want the people in, he says, you're going to take them. And if you don't take them, we're going to. No, that is not what went on, Phil. You're, you've got the story all wrong. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, when uh, we closed down the schools, we were having 20,000 infections a day nationwide. Now we're having 60,000 infections a day, and they're demanding that we open up the schools. What kind of fucking sense does that make? According to the CDC, uh, they say that the children in the schools not only don't spread it, but yeah. don't get it. CDC does but not. they Teachers. do. But they do yeah. bring it. They do bring it home. No, that's, <clears> no that's, that's, it fell. You. If you've ever had a kid, and I think you've had a kid, how many cooties did they bring home from school? Well, this virus. That's yeah. Not, okay, Phil. Uh, 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 Jeff, tell us say something. California. Jeff. All the kids in California. Do not go to school this year. They do it at home. 
That's a tremendous. Uh, not Orange County. Now, what if the that, president said about that? Orange okay. County. There was nothing. two. Nothing. Orange nothing. County is Republican and Trump dick suckers. No. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, San Diego and L.A. are keeping their schools closed. Mm -hmm. Orange County has said that they're going to. Yes, Orange it. County. That's where you have John Wayne Airport, for Christ's sake. Yep. Uh, okay. It's just that there's only three counties right now that is dealing with this, and the three. Happen Phil, to be what happened? Diego, you had Delaware, Betsy DeVos go on the morning show, the Sunday morning shows the other day, and she said we want all these schools have to open up, and then she gave no plan of how they were going to do it. No She's plan. She was asked, and she couldn't come open up with up, a plan. No fun. No fun. No, the, 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 no, the problem is the Trump administration has never had a plan for anything. He's getting back the to CDC the that has the plan. What? And, and the CDC has the plan, and they're the ones that uh, the Trump administration and the federal government are uh, allowing Oh, to quite the opposite. Today, Trump said he didn't believe what the uh, CDC was saying okay. and that it was too, it, it was too uh, extensive or something like that. Right. They wanted... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't agree with the CDC. Yeah, if if, if the CDC doesn't follow his lead... He doesn't believe in the plan. Well, uh, the, based on the science, it seems as though the kids didn't need as much as the CDC uh, recommended. Phil, Phil, I know parents that say, I don't care what the president says. I ain't sending my kid to school well, until the coast is clear. Yes, to. Kevin, Kevin. I'm just raising my hand because I'm one of them. Yeah, you're not. No, no, no matter what my happens, my 15-year-old daughter looked at the TV and said, "Who is this bitch?" When she saw Betsy DeVos in there. Me too. Uh, have I could care less what Trump and DeVos say. I listen to Fauci. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they asked her, "How are you going to keep the kids safe if they go back to school?" And she had no fucking answer to that. So that's, not. that's what she said. I'm not going back on with no plan. There's nothing. She's not. Teachers don't she's 15 years old. She doesn't listen to all this stuff all day long. The teachers' union strong. They're not going to let them ride that out. No, well, it, it, that's it, the, it, how are we supposed to go back? It's going to be it's going to be one thing to force the schools to open. It's going to be another for parents to send their kids to those schools. The, the public school. Uh, Brian, how about your kid? Still no, and especially especially with the age going down, right? You know, this age, this median age that they're looking at of catching it is going down into the forties. I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't want to get sick either. Yeah, they may not be having terrible symptoms, but they're having lung and organ damage. Right. Whether they feel bad or not, they're having the damage that's going to affect them for the whole rest of their lives. That's right. You know, I have to say something. I, I really you really have to say something? You've been so yeah. quiet all night. Well, yeah. I really appreciate the fact that uh, Alex and you guys have conversations with me and don't tell me to shut up. There's a moron on the, uh, on the chat. That you know can't say anything but Not shut trash. up. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. The, the thing is that that is a suppression of speech. It's it's no, the suppression. No, no of it's person. not. It's yeah, not it would be. It, 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 wait a minute, but it's his opinion, and that's freedom well, of speech. Fuck his opinion. <laughs> you know, uh, the thing is, yeah, uh, this is the kind of thing that yeah. the left is trying to do to the right. No, I see. Trying yeah, to yeah. Shut them up. You really represent the right. Every uh, yes. when any Jeff has something he wants to say. Yeah. Phil, yeah. you get to speak quite often, more often than anybody else here. So cut it out. Okay, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, the, tell that guy to call in. Yeah. Right. Tell I'm that guy to call in and tell right. you to shut That's, up in your face. No, I'm saying that you guys are, uh, are are respectful of the fact that I have a different opinion. Oh, very and, respectful. And, no, we're not. No, 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 we're not. You're, you're, you're living in a delusional world, Phil. We have no, Phil. Respect. We have no but, respect for but, your opinion. But you don't, you don't, you listen, you, you let me talk. Yeah. Whereas, uh, okay. That, well, that's it for tonight, I, folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you very much, Charlie Wallace. Thank you very much to... Uh, Rob, thanks to Ray Bernati, thanks to Phil Meyer, Jeff Stein, Tony, Brian Neary, and Kevin Stopper. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye. <laughs> oh, boy. That's it. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and there's another one coming up next on the, uh, on the, on the next show coming up, which is, of course, the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop. He'll be here next.
Uh, we'll be here again tomorrow night at 1030. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, stay safe. And no matter what the president tells you, wear a mask. Good night, everybody. <laughs>